Income tax 2021-2022 software example, capital gain or loss. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Dive in into income tax 2021-2022. Lacert tax software. You don't need access to any software to follow along, but you might want access to the forums, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Our starting point here being our single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, 100,000 on the W-2 income. The standard deduction, 12,550, giving us the taxable income, 87,450, mirroring that in our tax equation in Excel, the 100,000, the 12,550, the 87,450 taxable income. Page two, then calculating the tax at the 1515, mirroring that over here with the 1515. Going back to our tax return, we're now going to be looking at the most common kind of scenarios for a schedule a D, capital gains and losses, which would flow through to the first page here on line number seven. So we're focused here on line seven, remembering that we would typically be receiving then a 1099B. This is a look at a 1099B, but it will often look this way because oftentimes it's going to be in a summary format from the financial institution, which is going to pick and choose basically the boxes that are going to be applicable uh, to that to them at that point so notice the boxes that are typically applicable you got the date acquired and the date uh, disposed if you're talking about multiple stocks that were acquired and sold then these dates might be kind of like summary dates here and they might report that it's long term and short term and give, give you the detail of that information in the subsequent items of the reports, giving you all the individual stock sales that took place and all the related gains and losses related to them. And then we've got that's going to be an important part. And obviously the proceeds, what you received might be summarized on the first page of the report in the 1099B summary information. And then all the proceeds from all the different stocks that were sold might be in the following pages, which should tie out to the summary page. And then the cost or basis often being the most complex component might be summarized in the in the first page and it might be estimated as well because they might not know exactly what it is they're going to give their best guess because this is where the biggest problem is because you might have been holding on to these stocks for a long period of time you might not have been with the same brokerage firm for the entire time frame so that cost or basis can be kind of a confusion calculation but once again, it might be summarized on the first page, giving you then all the detail of the stocks and bonds that might have been sold on following pages. Now, also just realize that it's likely that uh, many people have access to stocks that they're investing in, but a lot of times it's under the umbrella of say a 401k or, or like an IRA during at least their their working years and they possibly don't put a lot of money in and out of it because they're invested in mutual funds or something like that under the umbrella of a retirement plan so you might not see if you're if you're uh, under a certain level or if you're concentrating on a certain type of return in terms of income level or complexity a lot of 1099b activity when you start working for more well-off individuals or people that like to say day trade do a lot of trading in stocks then you're going to see more of this kind of activity. If you see a lot of trades that are taking place, then you might try to summarize the data into short term and long term and then try to give an attachment to the IRS of the detail of all the information that's taking place instead of hitting, entering like 400 actual transactions that took place one by one, line by line. So just from a logistic standpoint, uh, just keep that in mind as well. So I'm going to go back on over. This is going to be our Schedule D. So if I go, if I open up the Schedule D just to take a look at it and go down here to the Schedule D, this is going to be the capital gains and losses. So we have the information on part one, which is the short term capital gains and losses. And then we've got the long term capital gains and losses. So when you think about those, there's going to be different tax treatment for the long term capital gains and losses. You have, in essence, another progressive kind of tax system that is taking place. But generally, you're going to have a more beneficial tax rate than you would have if you uh, categorize it in what we call ordinary income, which would be the normal tax rates. Now, again, this, this is something that you kind of want to know. You want to be able to tell someone, hey, you're going to have favorable tax rates for capital gains if they're long term capital gains, meaning sales that happened uh, that were over a year. You held on to it for over a year. 
Yeah, but uh, but you're probably not going to calculate that when you actually calculate the tax because that's going to be included when the tax calculation happens in this number 16. So once again, this is another area that makes it really complex to actually kind of calculate the taxes because now you got a progressive tax system. You got to know what the income is. The income levels can change the levels of taxes that are going to be applied. And now you have a different set of progressive rates for the portion of the income that's capital gains income that's long-term capital gains income. And you could also have different rates possibly for, as we saw before, dividend income if they're qualified dividends. So this calculation is getting more and more you know, complex. Software is going to be dependent upon in order to get it done. So if I go to the first half here, and let's say we, we hit the drop down and we go down to the uh, Schedule D dispositions. Normally you're going to have some kind of stock. So let's say we had, we had like five shares of company a stock we acquired it now i'm just going to say that i acquired it sometime prior to to uh to a year so it's going to be long term so let's say i acquired it 06 15 uh let's say 00, zero, zero so 2000 so it's going to be s definitely over Let's just do the whole thing 06 15 00, over a year and then we sold it sometime in the current year so this is going to be sometime in 2021 06 15 to one the sales price this is what we sold it for this is a known amount so the brokerage company doesn't have any problem telling you what you sold it for let's say it was 1000 there's the 1500 let's say 1500 and the cost this is where you could have problems because this is what you purchased it for and if there were stock splits and all that kind of stuff that took place that's where it gets a little bit confusing hopefully the brokerage firm can give you that information let's say it was 500 and so that's the general information that uh, that you would have I, and i'm going to go back and just see the calculation there so if i go to the schedule d then we're saying that's a long-term activity long term there's the 1500 proceeds we got but we paid 500 for it that means the gain capital gain long term capital gain is 1000 so it's 1000 and that'll flow up to the 1040 so here we have the 1040 the 1000 is now being included in line 7 as we can see here so now we're at the 101 and uh and so there we have that if i mirror that on my schedule I'd have to put in another schedule. Let's put it like right here and let's add another one. I'm going to say I want to add. I'm going to double click on it and call this schedule SCHD, schedule D, format the entire thing, right click and format this thing. I'm going to say let's format this whole worksheet, currency, brackets. I'm going to say no thing here, reduce the decimals, holding control, scrolling up. And I'm going to call this Schedule D Capital Gains. I'll just call it that. Is that good enough for the name? Is that good enough? If I say Capital Gains or Loss, I'll just keep it there. I'm going to make the whole thing. I'm going to make the whole thing boldened, and then I'm going to open up the brackets, and I'm going to say this: We have the long-term capital gains. And then I'll add some activity so I can put long-term capital gains stuff like right there if I want the detail of it, which I might not put the detail. I might just summarize it in this worksheet in short term. Well, let's do total. Let's do the totals first. Total long-term capital gains in the outer column, summing it up, summing up the activity. And then we'll have the short term term capital gains and then we'll leave a little bit of space here which i'll probably summarize it i wouldn't enter you know so sale by sale happen here and then i'm going to say this will be total short term capital gains summarizing that in the outer column and then I might have some other capital gains, you know, so that aren't reported here, but I'll, I'll put some space and I'll just for now say total capital gains, summarizing the outer column for the total. So if our, if our, and we might, and we might have, you know, more detail in terms of this, like I might want a sales comp column and a cost column, for example, let's actually do that. Let's actually, 
I'm gonna delete this for now. Delete. Let's say this is the sales cost and then gain slash loss. So, and let's center these, center these. I'm gonna make them black and white, making it black and white on the header. And then I'll copy these and put them down here and make this black and white, adding then a blue and border, blue and border. And then I'll add a blue and border here so I could summarize the total. And then so I could say, this was the sales price was 1,200 or 1,500. Cost was 1,000. The difference, 1,005 minus 100. And then I'm gonna summarize it down here, equals the sum of this, the cost was 500. Okay, there's the thousand. And then I'll do the same thing here, equals the sum of these. Now it could get a little bit complex in terms of the matching of gains and losses. So we might get into more detail on this later, but general idea here. And then this is gonna be the total, which I'll sum up the outer column, sum up the outer column. And that can give us an idea of this. Now that 1000 here, pulling down here is gonna be pulled into line one of the, of the 1040. So I'm gonna double click on this income line. I'm gonna add another schedule plus the schedule D, which is feeding into it of the 1000. So there it is. So there's the 101 standard deduction still at the 12550. We've got the taxable income at the 88450. That mirrors what we have here on the form 1040. So there's the 88450 going then to line two taxes at the 15165. So taxes at the 15165. Now the confusing thing here is in that tax calculation, that $1,000 is taxed at a different rate because it's gonna be a long-term capital gain. If I switch this over to short term, for example, I go back on over here and say, what if this happened? What if I bought it in 2021? I bought it in 2021 in like January and then I sold it in 2021 because I'm day trading. I'm day trading, okay? I make money. I can, I can see what's happening in the future and then I make money on it because I have a crystal ball. So I'm gonna then go to my forms. And now if I go to the schedule, now I can see it, it moved it up to the short term. So now I've got my proceeds on the short term and the cost is here. We still have the thousand dollars. So if I mirror that on my forms over here, I'd say, okay, schedule D is now in the short term down here, 1500 cost 500 gain or loss is down here instead of up top, I still have the 1000. What's the difference? Well, the difference doesn't really make a, a difference to our, our net income because I still have the 101, the 12550, the 88450. That should mirror what's on page one here. So we've got the 1000, I mean 100,000, the 1000, the 101, the 88450. But on page two, the calculation is now 15,255. So it's now, it was 15,165 and now it's 15,255. Why? Because now it's being taxed at ordinary income rates. So in other words, that added thousand dollars, if it's taxed at ordinary income rates, is taxed at our highest progressive rate, which was, looks like 24%. And if I get long-term capital gains rates, then it's gonna be taxed at these favorable rates for long-term capital gains. I'll get a benefit then. So, so again, it's kind of hard to see that in the tax calculation because it's all folded into this calculation, which we're not really doing. We're dependent on the software, but it's kind of a big deal then for something to be categorized as capital gains or ordinary income and so on. Uh, so that's going to be it. That's going to be the difference. Now, just from a logistical standpoint, if you go back on over here and you had multiple kind of sales, you sold another, you know, five shares, I'm going to say five shares or let's say six shares of company B. And that happened on, let's say you could have had this on uh, 01 to 06 21. We sold that for 2000 and the cost was 300 or something. You could have multiple sales and some of them could be short-term and some of them could be long-term. 
that would then pull out to schedule D that would pull out here to the to the schedule D you could also have losses that would that would be in place so you might have sold some stuff at a loss doesn't happen to me because I got a crystal ball but some people some people make bad choices sometimes so that must be must be terrible so if that happened then we're saying 02 15 00 to let's say 07 15 to 1 and let's say we sold it for 1000 and we had and we bought it for 3000 now if i go back on over that's going to those transactions are going to net out in in my calculation up top so, so that's going to basically net out here. So now I've got a net 3,000 loss. Now the netting out of losses and gains when you have short term and long term and then different tax rates related to them. And what if you have more losses than gains? That gets kind of in the weeds and that gets into tax planning. And so we'll talk more about that, you know, in a future presentation, just doing the data input. Obviously the software will kind of help you figure that out. And you can basically double check it with your worksheets. But when you're doing planning, then you're talking about okay now we got to match out the gains and the losses the short-term gains the long-term gains and what's what if we had more losses than gains and and that can get a bit uh, a bit confusing also just realize that if you if they sold like 400 type of things you got 400 sales instead of entering each transaction in here you might summarize this is the total of the short terms and this is the total of the long term so in our case in our case the long term we might we might tie those two together. I might say, okay, this is this is total short term, and then you know C schedule attached and attached some kind of schedule that's going to help us out. And then the date I might put something like this is negative 01 uh, 15 00, and that's going to say it's going to be various. And the date I sold it is going to be negative 06 15 uh, 2 1. So now I'm going to say the sales price was this 1,500 plus the 1,000 or 3,000. And then I'm going to say that the cost was the 3,000, the 500, 35. I'm going to delete this third one and just delete it. And then on this one, I'm going to say this is the total. Actually, the first one should have been total long term. Total long, long term. And this would be total short term and then again i might put a negative on the dates and tell them to see the attached schedule possibly so that when i go back on over to my forms then now i've got my my summary data up here for the short term and the long term i messed up my dates hold on a sec let's say this happened on 1 21 and so now i've got my totals for my short term and long term, which should match out to my summary data in my in my 1099B. And then and so that should calculate the taxes correctly because we got this the correct grouping of short term and long term. And then if they wanted to go into more detail, they might be able to find the schedule to give the individual transactions for the more detail and that could save a lot of data input time possibly.